in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with a couple very important pearls to remember. Uh, the first one, when you're performing the punch biopsy, you only need to penetrate about a third to two-thirds of the metal part of the punch. Uh, any deeper, you can cause some excessive bleeding. Uh, the next point, when you're using the lidocaine, um, be very, very careful to inject just directly under the skin. If you go too deep, um, the patient is going to feel it. It's the superficial part of the epidermis that needs to be numb. I like to check to see if the patient feels by tapping a time or two um, with the lidocaine needle, and, and they'll let you know if they feel it. Um, if you are injecting and you want to stay away from the lidocaine track when you go to do your biopsy, uh, next, stay within that bleb area, and sometimes when a patient is very heavy and they have a lot of adipose tissue, you don't really get a good bleb that you can visualize. You may need to kind of relocate your spot by keeping your finger right there. Uh, next area is to apply gentle pressure and rotate that biopsy punch. If you completely go in one direction, you'll notice that the skin kind of tightens up and then when it comes back, you end up cutting moon-shaped slices off your specimen. Um, so gentle rotation at the same time you're applying gentle pressure. Next area is never ever apply direct pressure with your forceps to that biopsy. You want to reach into the opening and gently pull up. Um, the areas that need to be processed and sliced are that superficial component of it. Place the uh, biopsy directly into the fixative. Do not let that biopsy dry. It is kind of sticky. It likes to stick uh, to the forceps, so you may have to use the needle to slide it off into the Zamboni. The Zamboni fixative tube is packaged very full. Again, that's intentional. Um, you want to make sure that it drops into the Zamboni. Uh, when you're screwing the cap on, be careful not to crush the specimen. Rotate the tube a time or two and you'll see that the specimen floats to the bottom. Um, also, be very careful that you don't touch your forceps into the Zamboni, especially if you're going on to do another specimen. Uh, it does irritate the skin. The uh, next area, we kind of reviewed that. Uh, I like to use what we call a double check system. Um, we make our labels out ahead of time, but we do not label the tube. You have a tendency, if you label your tube ahead of time and someone picks up the wrong site, you're not inclined to pick that up. So we label our specimens right after the specimen is entered into the tube and, and then both of us tend to call out the site together. Um, using a little bit of extra pressure on the site, especially if somebody is already on any type of antiplatelet or anticoagulant, um, or even holding firm pressure for a minute or so just to make sure is always a good idea. We still like to fold up a, a two by two and then apply a non-latex bandage on top of that. Uh, the last point is, again, the Zamboni is stored and shipped uh, at room temperature. There is no need to refrigerate it. Uh, it does not expire. Uh, we will only provide you with a certain number of kits at a time, so please keep us informed when you need more supplies, when you need more uh, tubes. Uh, in closing, I'd like to also show you a couple samples of uh, biopsies that are about six to nine months old. Uh, you can see that they're barely imperceivable. Um, they, in most cases, look like a little freckle can be a little bit darker than normal skin, even a little bit lighter, but usually the patients have trouble trying to figure out where we actually did the biopsy. 
Thank you very much. Please don't hesitate to give us a call should you have any questions or any concerns. Thank you.